Here's a comedy-centric moment. One of the things I love, uh, is you wrote an essay about um, uh, Rickles, your time with Rickles. You want to come on just sort of recap? Sure. Well, my father really didn't want me to be a comedian at first, and uh, but eventually he became my biggest fan, which is a great ending to an incredible story. But he loved Rickles. Rickles was his favorite, you know, next to, uh, you know, there the was a, he loved comedy. My mom was the funniest person on the planet. She really was. Mm -hmm. People would, you know, like doctors would call me and say, you know, I when I see your mother's on the schedule for that day, I'm not going to miss it because she makes me laugh, you know. And but my dad loved Buddy Hackett and they would all go see shows together and they were always having fun. So um, when Rickles came to Letterman early on, I went up into uh, to meet him in the dressing room. I'm not supposed to, but I right. I went anyway, and he grabbed me by the arm. Get in here, and we spend like a half hour. He's he wants to know more about my career and what's it like working in Europe and all this stuff. And we became close. And then I was able to go have dinner with Chef and Letterman and Rickles, which was one of the greatest days nights of my life, laughing for two and a half hours. So the next time Rickles is on Letterman, I now the Booker and gonna. I just had come back from working in Hong Kong, and I was telling Rickles about all that. So Rickles comes on the air with Dave, and Rickles can't remember the name Tommy Lee Jones. He was, and I yell from the side, Tommy Lee Jones, and Rickles goes, "I was gonna get it, you hockey puck or whatever kind of thing." <laughs> and Dave said, "That's so mean. Why would you yell at Eddie? He gave you the answer." He goes, "I love Eddie, bro." He said, you know, he's the greatest. He, you know, I know all about his career. And he started listing off all the, going to Europe and becoming the booker and going to Hong Kong. And he just Did said, you I capture love that. that clip. I would yeah, have captured that clip. It just yeah, it's, it's, on a loop. It's, it, and I told my father to watch. And my stepmother said that he cried because he oh. never thought I was, you know, his favorite comedian loved his son. And that kind of uh, really yeah. set everything in motion for a better relationship. Oh, that's good. Well, <laughs> so Rickles healed your family. Yeah, in a sense. And every time Rickles would come on the show, I'd see him before. And then I, uh, as he got older, I'd help him, you know, with the climb the step. We'd put him in place. You know, he was like a thousand years old at the end. Right. But all comics right. are. Phyllis Diller and George Burns, everybody dies when they're 120. This comedy <laughs> keeps you, you know. So Rickles is like 175 and he's on the show and he's still getting it done. It's still hilarious, but he needed That's help. That's the thing. The yeah, your brain. I mean, I need help getting on the stage. If there's stairs. You need help because sitting I, down. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I honest to God, when when I'm on, a, you know, if there's stairs to get to the, the rider or whatever the hell it is or the stage, I need to be helped up because I have a bad back. And, and as I'm climbing up, I'm going, Jesus Christ, I, you know, I'm one of those comics now, you know? Yeah, um, well, me too, in a sense. I've been, I've hurt my back, I hurt my leg and all that kind of stuff. But the, the last time Rickles was on, I helped him down and sort of like held his hand. And it was just, I'll never forget it. He passed away not long after. And I just remember that the last thing I had with Rickles was helping him and holding Aww. his hand. 